Welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to Mysteries from Beyond the Other Dominion. I'm your host, Dr. Franklin Rule. Now we ask if the Egyptian god Ptah was possibly an E.T. Roll tape. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to Mysteries from Beyond the Other Dominion. I'm your host, Dr. Franklin Rule. And today we're going to ask if the ancient god from Egypt, Ptah, was actually an E.T. Tell you about the haunted castle of Hamlet report on the very first use of the word robot and critique the 1961 sci-fi creature feature Gorgo starring William Travers and William Sylvester and cover other intriguing subjects time of course permitting. Now to get to Patal and here is a depiction of Patal. He was the Egyptian god of creation. He created the world egg, created all other deities and all artifacts in the universe. No slouch. Now what is important is that he was often depicted as a dwarf. Yes. And there was at least one other Egyptian deity also depicted as a dwarf, a lesser deity known as Best. Best was the god of fortune, fought off bad luck and evil spirits. And again, colorization by rule in all of these drawings. Now, what is important is that there is a new study from Georgetown University indicating that dwarves were highly regaled during all eras of ancient Egypt in the Old, Middle, and New Kingdoms. Now, is it possible that Ptah was actually an alien being? We've all often heard of the description little green men. Well, in the minority of cases only is the color green important, but certainly Small stature is a common dimension, denominality among ET reports, especially in cases of the third and fourth kinds of close encounters. And specifically, we often think of little grays, but there have been other depictions and descriptions of ETs as being short statured. Now, what is important is that if an ancient civilization of ETs landed in Egypt, establishing a bivouac there, they may have been regaled throughout the Egyptian history as a result of this. And we find from Georgetown University that dwarves were not just court jesters, but held high rank. They were sometimes statesmen, physicians, attorneys, and craftsmen. And one senator was actually accorded a funeral that any pharaoh would be jealous of and was buried just outside the Valley of the Kings. So why this respect for dwarves? Is it possible it dates back to an ancient alien bivouac that established the Egyptian civilization. Now, I mentioned that Ptah was credited with creating all other Egyptian deities. Well, most of them seem to be some sort of hybridization, human and animal. For example, here is Toth, the god of wisdom, having a humanoid form, but with the head of an ibis. There was Horus, the god of day, who had the hawk's head. Mentu, the god of war, who had a falcon's head. Hathor, the god of love, had a cow's head. And of course, Anubis, the god of the dead, who had the head of a jackal. Now, is it possible, just possible, that these were actually genetic creations, hybridization? Certainly not possible during the Egyptian or biblical era, but certainly possible today. With the deciphering of the human genome, I submit to you that within the next 20 years, if not sooner, we will have the ability to create such hybrids, possibly advanced aliens of the past already achieved that, and that could account for these unusual gods, that they were more than just mythological beings. Now, you may recall that I previously mentioned that perhaps cone-headed aliens also established a bivouac in ancient Egypt, ETs possibly from Mars, and that was based on this discovery right here of a second face on Mars by the spirit rover in the Bonneville crater. Now this is actually about the size of the human head, smaller than the celebrated face of Mars from 1976. This was discovered in 2004. And let's rotate it 90 degrees. Everyone who's seen that has said that certainly has a cone-headed appearance. Now that ties in with a number of the ancient Egyptians. For example, here is Osiris, the god of the underworld, always depicted as having a cone-headed headpiece suggesting he had an actual cone head. Let's fast forward to about 3000 BC, 
and Menes, the first Pharaoh, the man who united Upper and Lower Egypt, always depicted as having a cone-headed headpiece. And then fast forward to about 1397 B.C., and Nefertiti, the Queen of the Nile, again, always depicted as having a cone-headed headpiece. So possibly these were descendants of cone-headed aliens, or the result of marriage between them, so-called halflings, half-human and half-alien. Now, is this a contradiction? Could we possibly have tall cone heads and short dwarf aliens? Certainly, they could have been from the same planet, or perhaps from two or more different planets, which establish some sort of interplanetary, interstellar, even an intergalactic confederation in ancient Egypt. This could account for the marvels of that time, such as the three great pyramids and the secrets known by the Egyptian mystery school. I point out that some abductees have claimed, and this is a minority of cases again, but a few have claimed that when taken aboard an alien craft, they've encountered both small graves and tall humanoids. So this is certainly within the realm of feasibility. I cannot prove this controversial conjecture, but I submit it to you as, again, being possibly in the realm of feasibility for your consideration. Now until next time, may the power of the cosmos be with you. Yes, yes, yes.